Hi, I'm Jennifer Duda for the Mackinac Arts Center at College of DuPage. New Philharmonic continues with their 35th anniversary season, presenting Valentine's Pops concert coming up February 12th. Joining me is musical director and conductor Kirk Muspratt. Kirk, thanks for joining me. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, let's just dive right in and, and talk about the romance. Sure. Um, <laughs> there's romance in the form of Italian arias. There's romance in the form of Hispanic uh, romantic songs. There's Russian romantic music. Actually, some of the Russian romantic music I chose were pe pieces that people have asked me for over and over and over, and I haven't had a chance to program them. Um, so that's sort of the first half. It's light classical, that kind of thing. And the second half is Broadway, whether it's Carousel or it's Miss Saigon, that kind of music. And it's also movie music, um, uh, Purna Cabeza. We're going to maybe show a clip of Arnold Schwarzenegger dancing the tango. And we'll play some of that music. But we're also going to do Moulin Rouge and we're going to do Hook and Tinkerbell and Captain Hook and all that stuff. So it's a, a pastiche of many different kinds of music, hopefully something for everybody in the audience from many different generations from probably 1920 to 2010. Now is that what designates a pops concert versus a traditional classical music concert? Ah, oh, that's a good question. I would say a classical music concert is doing major works of people, whether you're calling them Bach or Mozart or Beethoven or Brahms or Paganini. Whereas a Pops concert could be anything. It could be, say it's July the 4th, and you decide you want to do all Sousa marches. Or it could be a Halloween concert, and you're just doing things from Hedwig's theme. You know, those kinds of things. They're usually shorter pieces, and they are more from popular culture, whether that's the popular culture of Sousa in 1910, and those kinds of concerts on the Esplanade in Boston, or they're things from Shrek. Okay. You know, I, I, they're shorter, lighter, more easily digestible, and they are part of popular culture, from whatever age that comes from. Yeah. And there are um, two guest soloists. Yes. So I anticipate some duets. Yes, there will be some love duets and also arias. And Angela had just finished singing with us in the Puccini opera we did last year. And she just graduated, if I can use that verb, from the Ryan Center down at the Lyric, uh, Angela Menino. And uh, John is here to sing the duets too. He has some very good surprises for us. I've programmed some good surprises for him as on course. Great. Talking about romantic music, what would you consider one of the most romantic songs? Mm, yeah, I was thinking about this. Uh, well, this is sort of an up song, but I really like Higher and Higher by Jackie Wilson. I know that's not like silly classical brain conductor things, but I also, you know, I was thinking just today that some of the stuff that Elvis sings is pretty, you know, if it's Love Me Tender or I Can't Help Falling In Love With You, it's pretty melty. You know, I'm a guy, but I still, you know, I listen, when he, when he was in his prime singing those things, they're delicious. I mean, they're just, how can you resist that if you, you know, anybody, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very romantic. And now this is an afternoon performance for New Phil. Yeah. Uh, and it's not just about maybe romantic love. I think oh, no. you talked about, you love your mom. Bring oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it, it's full of humor, but there are things that I programmed, um, I won't tell you right now what they are, that that are not boy girl you know under the moon diamonds you know honeymoon things there you could bring your daughters you could bring your your grandpa you could have an extended family of two children mom and dad and grandpa and grandma and there'll be something in the program that is there speaking directly to you because it is a program about love and not just the kind of romantic love between you know uh, uh, spouses say or a boyfriend and a girlfriend and this time of year, there's lots of concerts and movies coming out with that romance theme to it. What is it about a new Phil Orchestra performance that sets you apart from, from other concerts in the area? Hmm, no. What's unique about new Phil? I think a lot of it is our audience and our interaction with the audience. That it really, uh, we just did a concert recently, and I, there are people that just feel like family now. And I don't know, I'm not saying that at the Chicago Symphony you don't feel that. But I think at our concerts, you do much, much more. Uh, people get to know each other in that intimate, you know, in the Mac. 
they're closer together, they get to sit together all the time, they get to exchange hellos. I may, uh, probably in the Valentine's concert, I'll ask everybody to stand up and shake hands or embrace or give, you know, tell something, hi, I'm a podiatrist, hello, I'm a gardener, you know, whatever it is, and just, oh, really, you went to Central High? Oh, I went to West, you know, that kind of thing. And just get to know each other so they really feel that we are always experiencing the music together, all of us, whether you're playing the viola or you're somebody's grandma or you're an eight-year-old there in your little cute dress. And you feel, uh, not, your, uh, not only yourself, but the other musicians as well, make themselves accessible to the audience. Yes, I always ask the soloist to go out immediately right off the stage and to greet, and I also ask the orchestra. Now, the bassoonists are usually the last ones there because they have to put their contraption, they'll kill me for saying that, but all of their stuff away, you know, from the, and their reeds and things like that. And almost invariably, it just happened last weekend, they come out and there's no cookies left. But they do come out, you know, and they're like, they come to me like, and they, uh, like that lady left with three cookies and there's nothing for me. So, yeah, they do come out and they do participate. Now it's, part of the, it's just part of the feel of this orchestra. I can't quite tell you why. It just is. It works. It works. Now, as part of this, I, I know you've had post-show discussions in the past or, or little meet and greets. Is mm -hmm. that on the agenda for the Valentine Pops concert? No, we're not going to do that this time, Jen. What we'll do is we'll do our normal Just Ask Kirks. So if you have a question about love or about the bassoon, for instance, or about the soloist, or, you know, whatever. You can ask any question. I always answer every question. Either I'll call you on the phone, I'll email you, I'll send you a letter, or I'll do it in the concert right there. Or I'll say, can you come and grab me after? Because it's a complicated question. If you want to know really about the bassoon, come and talk to me with a cookie, and, and I'll do the best I can and, and uh, answer your question. What are some of the most entertaining questions you've received? Boah. Well, on the last concert, a person asked me a very intelligent and complex question. They said, um, if you were preparing to be a conductor, what would be the things that you would list as the most necessary to become that? Which is a very interesting and complicated question. And then they said, please tell us your three best attributes. And the whole orchestra just like, they're all looking at each other like, you know, so I just said, let me answer that one, you know, by phone or, you know, because, you know, what do I say? Rugged good looks or, you know, like, you know, genius brain or, you know, what do I say? Or, you know, preparation, hard work, you know, or I don't know what to say. Yeah, how do you say, how do you answer that? Well, we'll see what they come up with this time. Yes. Well, I wish you the best of luck with the upcoming performance. Thank you, Jennifer. And if you are interested in getting more information on this and any new Phil performance, you can call the MAC ticket office at 630-942-4000 or visit them on the web at www.athemac.org.